so welcome to this uh, special uh, tutorial class where i will be uh, for your first semesters where i will be talking today about three important phylum the first one which i will deal with phylum platyhelminthes next i will deal with phylum acehelminthes or the nematodes and the third phylum which i will deal is phylum annelida so this is actually the classification scheme of very three invertebrate classes in our former classes we had gone through uh, basically uh, we had gone through uh, porifera we had gone through nidarians so now we uh, go to the next thing phylum platyhelminthes nematohelminthes or acehelminthes or nematodes however there are different books have different names and then we will be talking about phylum annelida classification and characters and how do you identify these organisms and uh we will uh, go very uh, fast uh, tomorrow we will talk about the next invertebrate phylums that is phylum mollusca and phylum echinodermata and then in the following weeks we will go uh, on the vertebrate classes today if you uh, i had uh, send a lot of uh, these pdf files in the whatsapp group and uh, uh, you people can uh, then of course uh, go through them and on from uh, possibly uh, not this monday but the coming monday or uh, whatever where we will uh, or after the 15th of feb we will start having offline classes so we are, i have to wait after third i, I will tell you the exact date so let us uh, uh then uh, uh start our uh, talk first with phylum platyhelminthes so what the word platy means from leaf flat or leaf flat leaf like are uh, helminths are a special type of worms these worms are not arthropod worms these worms are different type of worms they are phylum platyhelminthes and these uh, organisms they don't have xylem as you can see it has got a triploblastic organization that is body wall divided into outer ectoderm middle endoderm and uh, middle uh, middle mesoderm and lower uh, endoderm so inner layer this inner layer here you can let me increase the size if you see it right now outer layer of ectoderm these light blue cells then you have the red colored uh, mesoderms uh, here mesoderm cells and you have the inner endodermal cells so if you take a cross section cut it from the half then uh, if you make a section from chop 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 section you will find this sort of an organization and inside this space is the gut or the intestine you can say so bilaterally symmetrical dorso ventrally flattened triploblastic worm it's a huge line bilateral symmetrical means that if you cut from the center both the halves are equal so if you cut my head this is one side on the left and one side on the right so i am bilaterally symmetrical so if you cut platyhelminthes from the center you have equal halves on both sides dorso ventrally flattened means from the top and bottom if you press them they are flat leaf like structures they are dorso flat and triploblastic what i have uh, mentioned that you have an outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm so this is a triploblastic or uh, and they don't have any space in between fluid filled cavity or space in between the uh, mesoderm called xylem they have absence of xylem here so body shape generally worm like but varies from moderately elongated flattened shape to long flat ribbon and leaf like ribbon like you have heard about tapeworms tinea solium tinea saginata 
or a lot of echinococcus granulus they are tape like so uh, and uh, leaf like you have uh, heard about uh, flukes liver flukes so uh, you have fasciola hepatica you have heard about these things so uh, they are flat leaf like structure for example this is the picture of one of these uh, fluke liver fluke so uh, you can see uh, it st sticks on top of the liver and it feeds on the liver tissue so uh, fa this fasciola hepatica so hepatica is from hepatic that is from the liver hepatic means liver so uh, it feeds on liver tissues so it is also known as liver fluke fasciola hepatica so uh, they are very small in size, uh, very uh, size varying from microscopic to extremely elongated form, measuring up to 10 to 15 meters, 10 to 15 meters. So these tapeworms in the stomach, sometimes they can grow as long as 10 to 15 meters. The tapeworm can come out from the stomach. Imagine that stuff, 10 to 15 meters coiled inside your stomach, flat leaf like structure coiled inside your stomach. My God not not a good thing to happen it's going to take all the nutrition from your intestine and food and uh, you start feel weak so majority of flatworms are white colorless and derive their color from ingested food this is the color which is coming is from the ingested food so on the anterior side you have an oral sucker but let me increase the size once more On the anterior side, you have an oral sucker present here, an oral sucker present. Then uh, from the sucker, there is it leads to a pharynx. You can see that there is a pharynx going here. There is a pharynx coming over here. Let's change the color. So you can see that this is the from the sucker. This is the oral sucker. This region was the oral sucker then a pharynx comes over here and the intestine starts from here this intestine it bifurcates into two halves it's bifurcating into two halves and it goes like this and then here in this region somehow it disappears you can't see what happens in the end and then you have this these structures called testes present test is present and it ends there is an excretory bladder present this is for removal of nitrogenous wastes and yeah the anus is absent you don't see the mouth is there oral sucker mouth possibly it, uh, the waste products exits from there and you have yolk glands present here in this region near the so called chest region in quotation marks you have the ventral sucker the uh, oral sucker and ventral sucker they attach to the liver that is used for attached even in tapeworm you have uh, uh, a head with scolex and rostrum to attach to the intestine you have uh, attachment organs present and you have the ovary and then the uterus are present in between and these structures seminal receptacles hermaphroditic structures you can see the testes and ovaries are present in the same organism then if you look at, uh, uh, for example, in tapeworm, let's see the head of the tapeworm. So you see that in a tapeworm head is like this. You have hooks for attachment to gut wall. There are four uh, suckers uh, for attachment to gut wall. New proglottids. Proglottids are cells, body segments. If you look at a tapeworm, uh, it has got body segments. So if you, uh, you have a tapeworm looking like this, then you have... Uh, small say uh, gradually it increases in size like, like this the tapeworm then you have a uh, this tape like structures coming up like this size uh, keeps on decreasing keeps on decreasing So each of these segment, each of these segment is known as a proglotid. So each segment is a proglotid. 
and the, the, for example this is a free living uh, platyhelminth is known as planaria or uh, planaria and, uh, you can see that uh, they have excretion is through excretory organisms known as flame bulb inside these tubules are present inside the body tubules of the protonephridia or kidney which remove excretory product so opening in the body wall this opens to the outside so this region they are highlighting in big they are making it big so opening in the body wall this is a tubule this is a flame bulb if you look at the flame bulb you can see that the filtration uh, of their protonephridia the filtration of the nitrogenous waste products takes place over here and exits outside through the opening in the body wall nervous system is uh, located like this one central ganglion then two side uh, uh, commissures go and the lateral nerves two lateral nerves one central uh, brain or the central ganglion is present here two lateral nerves come over here and they are connected by commissures so this is uh, how basically you can define a platyhelminthes now you can define classific according to barnes you have to you have to study art according to barnes 1994 phylum platyhelminthes can be uh, divided into four classes first is class turbellaria second is class trematoda that includes the subclass digenia and the uh, subclass aspidogastria and you have the class monogenia and the class cestoda cestodas are the tape worms monogenians are there are monogenian worms the trematodes are the liver flukes and uh, planarians and digenians uh, and uh, 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 you have the turbellarians or the free living uh, planaria so turbellaria means a little string they are mostly free living flatworms so planaria is a free living uh, pla planaria convoluta they are free living others are all parasitic they look like this uh, uh, some are ectocommensals and endocommensals commensals means both of them help uh, live together without harming each other others are parasite means they are harming the host so body covered by a cellular or syncytial epidermis uh, with mucous cells which are usually uh, ciliated syncytial means the cells are not divided by the uh, outside the uh, so you have many cells which are not divided separately so the nucleus of all e each cell is present here these cells are not divided like this normally it is not divided so this is a syncytium and they are also ciliated adhesive organs are present and uh, digestive system consists of mouth pharynx and intestine anus not found excretory system consists of protonephridia or that the flame cells as it's a common thing sense organ consists of tango receptors or chemo receptors they are hermaphrodite main thing is that they are free living remember they are free living planaria convoluta catenula they are free living then trematodes they have pores in their body they are ectoparasites they are known as also flukes they are also dorsoventrally ch flattened chipka hua hai body wall without epidermis of cilia body undivided and covered with a cuticle there is, there is a thin chitinous covering on their body known as cuticle inside the body it is uh, uh, it faces lots of harsh environment so this cuticle prote pr protects the internal structures okay so digestive uh, tract is incomplete so this is how a uh, uh, fasciola hepatica looks like see it uh, fasciola hepatica L uh, let me increase the size you can see it more clearly you see oral sucker all these uterus are present there are the intestinal cecum is present ventral sucker is present over here oral sucker is present this is how it looks 
then you have the monogenons example diplozoan and polystoma they are the monogenons so what are the characteristic features they are ecto or endoparasitic forms of vertebrates their oral suckers are either weak or absent this is a very important character oral suckers are weak or absent monogenia digenia means two suckers fasciola fasci hepatica are digenians two suckers oral and ventral sucker monogenian oral sucker is not present anterior uh, end provided with a pair of anterior suckers posterior end provided with adhesive disc usually a hook they have got a free swimming ciliated larva called oncomeracidium larva what is oncomeracidium larva this the question comes free swimming ciliated larva of monogenians are known as oncomeracidium larva if you write this you get one mark one out of one complete then you have the famous cestodes or the group of the tapeworm tapeworm girdle form so this is a tinea mature proglottid each of these tap like structures are present each segment is known as a proglottid so body is covered with it has doesn't have an epidermis but covered with cuticle because uh, through the uh, throughout the body general body there is absorption of nutrients just let's see there is a sound comes somebody has left or oh no everybody is there okay so uh, each segment is a pro uh, proglottid they absorb nutrient from inside the throughout their body anterior end you have scolex and rostrum you had seen see this picture here before i had shown just to remember once more this is the head this is cola scolex and the head this is the rostrum so these are the cestodonts or the tapeworms ribbon like remember see head is the scolex then hooks and suckers present immature pro proglottids then you have uh, mature proglottids and then you have gravid proglottids immature proglottids are immature bachcha hai mature means uh, uh, either testes or ovaries they are uh, already uh, they have developed and gravid means they bear eggs प्रीतदीप कि प्रीतदीप एनी क्वेश्चन प्रीतदीप ओके देन यू हैव दिस 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 डॉग टेप फॉर मोर इकाइनोकॉकस ग्रेन्यूलोस यू हैव दिस दिस आर आल्सो से सो दिस इज इन ब्रीफ अबाउट Platyel menthis. All these notes have been sent. You can uh, aram se read. Rahul, give me a call in the evening. Okay. Okay, sir. Well, it's a seven eight baje ke baad phone karna ek bar. Okay. Okay. ठीक है. Uh, so next we go to the next uh, uh, chapter. That is phylum Nematoda. so this is the nematodes basically like platyel menthis if you see they have got an outer ectoderm uh diagram anyway this is the outer ectoderm you have a mesoderm this is the mesoderm i'm very poor drawing but just to explain i'm drawing the mesoderm then the funny thing is that they have a fluid filled cavity but the fluid filled cav then you have the endoderm and you have a space of so fluid filled space over here 
so they are pseudo silomates they have a space filled uh, silom but that silom is not in between mesoderm so if the uh, silom is not in between mesoderm then they are pseudo silomates a true silomate like annelids they have got their uh, uh, silom uh, in between the mesoderm we will see after i finish this note i will uh, show you a picture on the internet or how the what is the difference between uh, silomates acilomates and pseudo silomates so that uh, it is uh, the things are clear to you now in fact I, i i show it right now that's the best thing i show it uh, right now so have a j just take a look at a picture body cavities body cavities are the spaces formed in the early development of animal organisms one very important cavity that forms early on in more complex animals is called a cellum the cellum allows organisms to grow and move independently of the outer body layer. Let's look at the three different types of body cavity formation. Going from simple to complex, they include acelomates, as you can see at the top, are demonstrated um, in this cross section of a flatworm. There is no body cavity um, in the mesoderm, so no sort of separate body cavity like this. And there's no cellum to help this organism develop more complex internal systems. So we'll write primitive. Pseudocelomates, such as the roundworm seen here, maintains a pseudo, meaning fake, coelom. This roundworm only has a cavity that is partially lined by mesoderm seen here. This organism has more of an advantage than flatworm. Remember one thing. Remember over here that these cavities, they are of the coelom. They are, they are or uh, pseudo coelom. They are fluid filled. It's not empty space. There, it is filled with a fluid. Okay, let's continue. Worms, since um, it can develop a distinctly separate and more complex body system. So we're getting increasingly complex going down this list. And finally, coelomates are the most complex. Organisms that are coelomates, such as mollusks, vertebrates, and so on, have enough space for the development of complex organ systems, allowing for improved mobility, reproduction, and communication among systems. Remember that only triploblastic animals animals with three germ layers can possess a body cavity but that not all do and that the presence of a cellum or a coelom helps scientists classify organisms and better understand the relatedness to other organisms okay so let us get back to our uh, the note which we were studying phylum nematodes so nematodes are the round worm they are also known as uh, ascihelminthes or phylum nematoda so like i said primitive body cavity they are pseudo coelom it's a fake coelom so it is not in between the mesoderm but it's below the mesoderm uh, mesoderm and endoderm in between the mesoderm and endoderm it's not the proper coelom which is supposed to be present inside the mesoderm round uh, you can see they are round like round structures they have a protective cuticular covering outside they have a dorsal nerve and a ventral nerve over here the taste is present excretory tube is present and the nerve ganglion uh, is at the head and then dorsal and you have a ventral nerve present they have got a simple digestive system mouth at one end of the body 
so uh, the food goes into the pharynx where it is crushed by the muscles the food then goes to the gut for digestion the nutrients then move to the cells and the waste moves out of the body thanks to the two excretory canal located on either side of the nematode's body there are two excretory canals on either side of the body they have a protective cuticle to cover against the digestive juices and other things present in their vertebrate hosts they are parasites they can be of the class aphasmida these are aphas uh, uh, like trichuris vulpis their eggs and examples are trichinella trichuris trichinella vaginalis so these are trichinellas then you have the, fa the you have uh, anterior end of the body bears chemoreceptor amphids phasmid absence phasmids are not present in the anterior end so they are known as aphasmida so when uh, uh, amphids and posteriorly ph phasmids are present they are phasmid uh, ph they belong to the class phasmida example ascaris vucheridia encyclo uh, uh, encyclostoma so, so the, or the hookworm the ringworm ringworm uh, which is sometimes enters through your soles of the cracks in the soles of the feet so this is how nematodes are classified the most famous are the ascaris and the vuchar area round worms and the one which causes file area the males are smaller females are larger they show a sexual dimorphism so these are the main characteristics of phylum nematoda <coughs> lastly where we go uh, to, to today's class to uh, annelids so before we go to annelids let me uh, uh, give you an another youtube video on phylum annelida हटाओ सीधा मसाले पे आओ अब लगा मसाला गुड डे लर्नर्स दिस इज इज इंजीनियरिंग फॉर टुडे टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द एनालिड्स वी लव प्लेइंग विद द रेन एंड समटाइम्स आफ्टर अ रेन स्टॉर्म वी फाइंड दिस विगली क्रिएचर्स इन द मड Our parents might say it's dirty, but we still play with them. They are worms. Yikes, right? But what are they really? Are they friends or foes? Let's find out. Earthworms are the classic example of annelids. Annelids are all of the segmented worms. That means they have segments in their bodies, like the trains have each car segment. They are long, and each segment carries something. They are special because they actually have loads of body parts that are duplicated in each segment. That means each segment can act on their own. If one segment is damaged, some annelids can go on living. Unlike us humans, if we lose a part of our body, we might be in a terrible situation. Fun fact learners, did you know that annelids breathe through their skin? That's because they don't have lungs and they have a special skin for getting oxygen. So, what are their basic features? Well, they are vermiform or worm-like. They are segmented inside and outside. Internal segments are separated by septa or walls. Their division of their body is called metameric segmentation. They move in locomotion like a train does, but instead of wheels. They have two pairs of setae or setae. or hairs made of chitin in each segment they also have something called a closed circulatory system they circulate nutrients and compounds through their segments using tubes and they have a heart too some of them live 
in the soil and sediments. Others live around waters. Usually they are small like 20 centimeters, but some of them could grow from as little as 1 mm to up to long as 3 meters. And you might confuse them for a snake. So what are the kinds of annelids? Well, there are three classes of annelids. The class Polycheta or the bristle worms, they are marine annelids and they are usually hairy. They are less popular compared to others. Next is the class Oligocata or the marine, freshwater and terrestrial annelids. Unlike bristle worms, they have less bristles. One example is the popular earthworm. And lastly, the class Herodinia. They are also marine, freshwater and terrestrial worms. One example of this are the leeches. We might not like this one because they could bite you and suck your blood. Fun fact learners, did you know that leeches have 32 brains? A leech internal structure is divided into 32 separate segments and each of these segments has its own brain. So what do annelids eat? Some annelids prey on other small invertebrates. Some live in tubes and emerge just to grab the prey with their jaws as they pass by, like a tiger waiting to pounce a prey. Many annelids are detritivores. That means they feed on sediments and deposits because they contain very small invertebrates and microorganisms. So how do they reproduce? Depending upon species, annelids can reproduce both sexually and asexually. That means they sometimes find a partner or sometimes they do it alone. But that doesn't mean they're lonely. It only means they do it just because they can. In the asexual or self-reproduction, the posterior part of their body breaks off and forms a new individual. Lumbricolus and Olophorus, for example, are known to reproduce by the body breaking into such fragments. But take note that not all worms can regenerate. In sexual reproduction, hermaphrodite, annelids like earthworms mate by copulation. Two worms which are attracted by each other's secretions lay their bodies together with their heads pointing opposite directions. The fluid is transferred from the male pore to the other worm. So the question is are they friends or foes? Well, you At this point I would like to tell you that uh, the hermaphrodite means they have got the males and uh, female uh, sexual organisms together but it is not that I have uh, testes and ovaries inside me I am an earthworm it doesn't mean that I can reproduce myself I normally I, 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 uh, when my testes are developed then my ovaries are not developed at that time so that is uh, how it is so another uh, earthworm you have the ovaries developed but testes not developed so the one in which testes is developed and the one in which ovaries are developed they come together they go uh, copulate uh, come side by side and copulate and mate and then they have uh, then they of course they reproduce uh, zygote and development takes place in a region of the earthworm known as clitellum so uh, it's not that uh, since they are hermaphrodite they can uh, themselves they can make their own eggs and sperms and then they reproduce it's not like this you need two earthworms to do it do you think of them as icky or dirty or they could bite you or even imagine they could go live inside you which they won't they are actually a lot of benefits we have on annelids rugworms and earthworms are often used by fishermen as bait to catch fishes some of them are even farmed because their waste becomes a natural fertilizer in the soil for plants. Some of them are grown to be natural food for the fishes in the farm so that fishes grow big and healthy. Even some leeches are helpful too. Well-known medicinal leeches are blood suckers, but instead of our normal blood, they can be put to a position where they suck out our toxic blood only. So learners, now we've learned that Annelids aren't just our foes. In some ways, they are our friends too. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Have a nice day. Okay, let's get back to our class now. Phylum Annelida. So body, as you see, let me increase the size. Are true, you have an outer ectoderm. 
just for a moment they have an outer ectoderm then the red colored mesoderm in between the fluid filled space the coelom this is the true coelom and you have the yellow colored endoderm and you have another red uh, internal mesoderm here supporting all the organelles and the coelom acts as, as you have seen in that video it acts as a hydrostatic skeleton it gives firmness to the body space where different complex organs are formed all these things can happen so metamerically segment means they have got many segments each segment you can see one two three so many segments each segment is a copy of another segment like bogies of a train you have the main engine like the head and then you have all the bogies of the train they look same so like this uh, uh, that th th this is the main thing they have got a closed uh, circulatory system the presence of muscular gut with mouth and anus body cavity often divided by transverse septa so like you had seen in that video they have small septa which divide the body one by one uh, the metamers or the segments one by one they can be divided into polychaetes polychaete keta is hair bristles so if you uh, look uh, let me increase the size some more these are the legs there is one segment two second this is the first segment this this is the first segment this is the following this the next segment you can see in their legs they have little bristles like structures these legs are known as parapodia these little bristles of legs are known as parapodia and each parapodia has got many bristle like uh, bristle like झाटार काटी झाटार इ मतन टूथब्राश मत मेनी ब्रिसल्स कमिंग आउट सो दे आर नोन एज किट दे हैव मेनी सो दे आर नोन एज पॉलीट दे आर ऑल मेराइन एग्जाम्पल इज नेरिस दिस इज द पिक्चर ऑफ अ नेरिस द ऑलिगो किट दे हैव दे हैव ऑल्सो सीटा बट दैट इज लेस इन नंबर ऑलिगो मीन्स फ्यू प्रेजेंस ऑफ क्लाइटेलम लाइक यू कैन सी द अर्थ वर्म एंड यू हैव द leech which suck blood anterior and ventral sucker they have 32 around segments usually two suckers are present so this is how you define any lead so you at least i would say for each uh, phylum each class each subclass read two character two most important character and two a uh, scientific uh, scientific name examples in uh, and that i would say that it would be sufficient for your uh examination and of course you have to give the classification scheme and main thing on whose basis you are classifying for example you are classifying on the basis of rupert and barnes r u p p e r t and barnes 1994 you must always mention whose classification scheme you are following rupert and barnes 1994 with this i uh uh stop my sharing today and uh, let me ask if you people if you have got any uh, questions sir ha bolo any questions pritadeep no sir till now no no sir kisi ko koi question nahi hai na okay no sir no sir tab main aaj ye class i am ending my class over here and i will send you the recording a uh, youtube link uh, in by the evening okay uh, okay everybody. sir i will uh, okay, upload sir. it i will upload in the youtube and i will today's class i will okay. send you the youtube yes. recording okay bye thank you very much for attending the class okay bye thank bye. you sir bye bye tomorrow thank also you, class at 4 o'clock okay bye sir okay bye bye sir so, internal exam 22 tarikh aaj जानी ना वोटा तुम्हें एरा बोले देवे बुझते पर चिंता करो ना डोट वरि ओके रखी गो प्रीतदीप यस सर ओके ओके हम्म